This is part three of three on chapter four, a survey of prokaryotic cells. This part of the chapter, I'm going to look at the unusual prokaryotic organisms. So prokaryotics with unusual characteristics. So first we're going to look at t three different types of unusual free-living non-pathogenic bacteria. So one type of bacteria that has unusual characteristics are the photosynthetic bacteria. These are bacteria that can do photosynthesis or a type of photosynthesis where they can actually make their own food. So one type is called cyanobacteria or it's also called blue-green algae. I'll show you green and purple sulfur bacteria and then there's gliding or fruiting bacteria. So first off, the cyanobacteria, or it's also called blue-green algae, but it's not really algae, it's actually a bacteria. These bacteria, they have gram-negative cell walls, so if you do a gram stain on them, they're going to be pink in color, showing gram-negative. Cyanobacteria, they have extensive thycaloids. Thycaloids are the part of the cell that can do photosynthesis. So these thycaloids, they have photosynthetic chlorophyll pigments, and they have gas inclusions. A lot of cyanobacteria also have um, inclusion bodies that are used to store this food that they can actually make. And the cyanobacteria, they have blue or green pigments to them, so that's why they're called blue-green algae. The green and purple sulfur bacteria, these bacteria are also photosynthetic. And they contain a pho photosynthetic pigment called bacterial chlorophyll. The thing about the green and purple sulfur bacteria is that instead of giving off oxygen as a byproduct, which happens in normal photosynthesis and photosynthesis of plants, the green and purple sulfur bacteria, they give off sulfur as a byproduct of photosynthesis. So they have kind of that rotten egg sulfur smell to them. And then the third type are the gliding or fruiting bacteria. These are also gram-negative bacteria, and they can glide over a moist surface, or they kind of form these fruiting structures. So we have bacteria cells working together. Other types of unusual forms, and these are medically significant bacteria, these are obligate intracellular parasites. So I'm going to kind of break down this new term for you. So obligate means that they have to have something. Intracellular means that they live inside of other cells. So they have to live inside of other cells. And they're parasites, so they cause some type of damage or they some, cause some type of disease to the cell that they're living in. So one obligate intracellular parasite is rickettsia. Rickettsia, it's a very, very tiny bacteria. It's gram-negative if you do a gram stain on it. Most of the species of Rickettsia are pathogens. They're going to cause disease or they're going to cause damage to that host cell that they have to live in. So again, they're obligate intracellular, so they cannot survive or multiply outside of a host cell. They have to live inside of some type of host cell. So one specific species, Rickettsia rickettsii, this causes Rocky Mountain spotted fever. And in the picture to the right, there's tiny, tiny rickettsial cells, and they're actually living in a vacuole, which is a structure inside of a eukaryotic cell. And you can tell that they're inside of a eukaryotic cell because it has a nucleus, and that nucleus is labeled, it's on the left-hand side of the image right here. So these rickettsia cells are very, very tiny. Another medically significant obligate intracellular parasite is chlamydia, or the chlamydias. These bacteria are also very tiny, and again, they're obligate intracellular parasites, so they have to live inside of a host cell, and they're parasites, they usually cause disease. They're not transmitted by any vectors, so they're not transmitted by insects like mosquitoes or ticks or anything like that. So two significant bacteria, so chlamydia trichomatis, this causes severe eye infection, and it's also one of the most common sexually transmitted diseases. So chlamydia is a bacteria disease that can be sexually transmitted. Chlamydia pneumoniae causes pneumonia or lung infections. 
So the important thing about chlamydia, when it's a sexually transmitted disease, yes, it's a bacteria. Yes, we can treat it with antibiotics. So it's not as dangerous as some of the other sexually transmitted diseases. But some species of chlamydia are actually becoming resistant to antibiotics. So it's still really important to use protection against sexually transmitted diseases. Even if you think it's no big deal, eventually they're going to be resistant to these antibiotics, it's going to be a lot harder to treat chlamydia in the future. So just a warning out there for all of you. Other types of prokaryotic organisms, so most of this chapter we spent talking about bacteria, which are in the domain bacteria. The other prokaryotic organisms belong in the domain archaea. The domain archaea, it includes organisms that are closely related to the eukaryotic organisms, but they still have these prokaryotic cells. So archaea, they contain unique genetic sequences in their RNA. And then the other important thing about the archaea bacteria or archaea organisms is that they have unique membrane lipids and cell walls. And these really unique lipids and cell walls allows them to live in extreme environments. So these archaea, they live in really extreme habitats in nature, so they're considered to be extremophiles. They love living in extreme environments. So they're adapted to very high heat, they're adapted to very high salt concentration, acidic environments, they can live at very high pressures, they can live at very high atmospheres. Um, so these include the methane producers that can live in areas where there's no oxygen, so anaerobic environments, no oxygen environments. Hyperthermophile, so very, very extreme temperatures, like in a hot spring. They can live in those hot springs. Extreme halophiles, so halo means salt. They're salt-loving salt -loving organisms. And then there's also ones that can reduce sulfur, so they can use sulfur to get their energy and to grow.